Um, let's get into some NBA talk, Trip. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The schedules officially came out. I see you got your yellow on. <laughs> I, I, I know what that means. You, mm-hmm. You're in Laker mode. I'm happy. Uh, happy. The, the, let's let's start with opening day. We we gonna dissect the whole schedule. Obviously, it's a long season. Can we talk Christmas Day too? At least we can. Yeah, we could do both. Um, so opening night, I think the NBA did a wonderful job with scheduling the opening night. Uh, Brooklyn kicks off against Milwaukee, which this seems like it might become a little bit of a rivalry right here because we know the comments they claim KD made about Giannis, and then Giannis made the comments after winning the championship. Harden and, and the Nets now have come out and said, look, everybody knows who would want to chip if, if we was healthy. Yeah. They kick it off, and that's going to be the night the Bucks get their rings. And then the nightcap of that one should be super exciting as well. The new look Lakers going up against Golden State, who for the first time probably in two and a half years are going to be healthy. Now Klay Thompson is expected to be out. So they got this mix of veteran championship core along with these young guys they're bringing in, Kuminga, um, the young boy, uh, man, now his, his name slips on mine now that, that they drafted last year, the big man. Uh, James Wiseman. James Wiseman. So what do we make of the opening day schedule? And then Christmas is highlighted with some great games as well. I absolutely love it. I'm so excited. I already, I told you uh, last week, I already put my, my, my $10 down for 2K22. It is about to go down. Oh my goodness. This Lakers Warriors game. I'm so hyped about this game right here. I think this is actually going to be a very exciting game. I think it's going to be a close game that's going to c- come down uh, to the end because anytime you put LeVon, Le, um, LeBron James versus Steph Curry, it's going to be an exciting basketball game. They're healthy. Uh, the Lakers have Westbrook and, and Carmelo Anthony and you know all the other uh, new guys that they brought in, Malik Monk, Trevor Ariza. Um, they brought back uh, Tucker. So I think that game is going to be an incredible back and forth game. And I think we're going to see like in, you know, with the other game that Nets versus Milwaukee, I think we're going to see like those old nineties Knicks heat games, like one of those physical uh, Indiana Knicks or or, or Knicks bulls. I think we're going to see one of those games with those two teams because, you know, Milwaukee is going to come into this season with the chip on their shoulder, winning the championship, you know what I mean? Um, and then beating the Nets to get to, you know, on on well, on their way to the NBA Finals, but they beat the Nets in the seven-game series. Listen, whatever you want to call it, we know injuries pop up all the time, so we can't give – we got to call it clean across the board. You know what I mean? Like, you, at the end of the day, you still had Kevin Durant out there. You had half of James Harden out there. Um, but, you know, Milwaukee still got the job done. You mentioned all the back and forth that's been going on with uh, the alleged KD comments that were about Giannis. But Giannis talking about, you know, getting it done without a super team. Uh, James Harden going back and forth. This game is going to get very chippy. It's going to be very physical. Um, it's definitely going to be some technicals in this game because the I, I don't think these two teams like each other at all. Uh, but I think it's going to be a great game. I think that series this season, and then again, when we get into the playoffs, because I do see them facing each other again at some point or another uh, in, in NBA playoffs, that is going to be a great back and forth this season. Absolutely. I think they're the two best teams in the East. Yes. Um, they gave us a classic playoff series. And like you said, I expect it to be chippy now because Brooklyn in their heart feels like, and like most people, they are the best team <laughs> in the East, if not the whole NBA, and they should have won a chip. And Milwaukee on the flip side is like, well, we did it. So now you got to come through us. It's going to be, it's going to be very chippy. Um, I'm so looking forward. I think I, and I hate to say it, man, as a Nick fan, I think Kevin Durant is, is shaping up to have an MVP caliber season. I just think he's going to play with a certain chip on his shoulder. Um, the Lakers are going to have a chip on his shoulder. We, we can't overlook Braun right now because Braun has been very vocal during this off season. He didn't like some of the critique of how this roster was put together. You know, he said, Oh, we're old. We're washed. You're going to see how washed we are when the season comes. Then there was a recent poll that went out ranking the best players in the NBA. Braun got no first place votes. Uh, he's upset about that too. So is this, are we seeing Braun who's on a mission to, to show everybody, not only am I the best player, but we're the best team in the league. I think Russell Westbrook's going to have a chip on his shoulder because Russ has been counted out a little bit as well. Um, I, I'm interested to see these matchups, man. I think these are playoff caliber matchups to kick off the season. The last time, I'll say this, the last time uh, LeBron got motivated 
um, because of some things that was going down, the Lakers won a championship. That um, was yes, that was two years ago. He's got to stay healthy though, bro. Is, yes. Does Father Tom finally catch up to him? Is going to be the question. Um, I think LeBron does stay healthy this season. Um, I think really who who, who I'm concerned more with would be Anthony Davis. Um, and his health, he's actually got to stay healthy. I think he will though, just because. You know, lat coming into last season, it was a you know they went the farthest going to the finals. And then they, they they had the shortest turnaround. Um, you know, Anthony Davis already isn't used to making those deep playoff runs like that anyway. Um, so to come back so short, he was already a little sluggish starting off the season anyway. So uh, I think I think guys will stay healthy. I think the addition of Russell Westbrook will actually help guys staying healthy, just because. You know, Westbrook's energy level is off the charts anyway. And during the regular season, you can let uh, Russell Westbrook and the rest of those guys take the lead and give LeBron, you know what I'm saying, a little bit more of a rest. Because, they're, you know, they're going to be good enough to win on 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 most nights anyway. You know what I mean? If, if LeBron takes an extra five, ten minute rest here, here and there, they're still going to be – an amazing team with Westbrook. Like, like you know, we still got to give, and you know, you, you and I have, but you got to give Westbrook his credit. We're still talking about an MVP who has averaged a triple double four out of the last five years. Like, I get it. You know, all of these, the 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 Westbrook can't shoot, or the Westbrook is a ratty guy. But at the end of the day, Westbrook is still an MVP in this league. He's been to an NBA finals before he's averaged a triple double several times over. He's a multiple time all-star. He's had all NBA appearances. Like we can't sit up here and act like Russell Westbrook is not one of the top guys in the NBA for the, for the last, you know, five, six seasons, maybe even a little bit, a little bit longer. He's been one of the, he's been one of the top guys. Like he's not, he's not a slouch. And then, you know, for the, 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 the three point shooters, once again, the last two championship winners were not three-point shooting teams. <clears throat> and the Lakers have shooters. You know what I mean? They, they, they definitely did bring in some shooters to fill out that, that roster. They may actually make one more move. I'm hoping they do. I'm hoping they, they, they want to bring in over J.J. Redick if they can bring him in um, for, the, for the, the minimum. But I, that team is, is going to be really good. And, and I think, you know, all of those – Oh, the, the Lakers, Westbrook is gonna mess everything up. They're not gonna be, no. They're gonna be. They, they're gonna prove them wrong. They're gonna go to the playoffs. They're gonna have a deep run in the playoffs. Most likely, it's gonna be a finals run, barring any injuries. If the Lakers are healthy going into the playoffs, they will be in the finals. Yeah, that's the biggest thing with them. I, and I said that from the jump. I wasn't sure how they were building a roster until they made the other moves: Malik Monk, Carmelo Anthony, Trevor Ariza, um, Wayne Ellington. Once they added that shooting, then I, I liked it a lot more. I'm not going to front. In the beginning, I was critical. I, I'm on record as saying, I want to see how this is all going to work yes. with Westbrook, LeBron, and AD. But once you add those shooters, it makes sense. And, you know, you're right. You can't ignore the fact, no matter how you feel about Russ, he's still one of the top 25 players in the league. Yeah. And the Lakers have three of the top 25 guys along with a solid supporting cast because now you bring Dwight in as another big, right? You you Again, you bring in Melo now who can play the stretch four and it's going to probably give you nine to 12 points a night. You got a, a young athletic guard like Malik Monk who can shoot the ball and create a little bit. Uh, you got Trevor Reza, who, though he's not the, the Trevor Reza of old, he's still a solid vet who can give you defense. And if you add J.J. Redick, it's just another shooter. So I think the Lakers are the favorite. Say that again. And Kendrick Nunn. Well, Nunn Kendrick Nunn, it's going to be interesting how to use Kendrick Nunn because I think if it, if it isn't Westbrook, it's going to be Braun handling the ball. Yes. And then they're going to have to figure out the lineups based around those two guys. So I don't know. Kendrick Nunn may have his moments. I just don't know. If, in, in the pecking order, I don't think he's playing over Malik Monk. I don't think he's playing over Horton Tucker. He's not playing over Rush. You know what I'm saying? Like, that might be the, the tricky part for him. Good young talent. I just don't know how he fits with them. But ultimately, they are the favorites to come out the West. And as you mentioned, it's health. If, if they're able to manage the minutes, Frank Vogel can figure out the rotations and preserve those bodies for the playoffs, nobody's beating them in a seven-game series. You're not beating that team four times in a series, if fully healthy. Now, if they're banged up, obviously it's a different yeah. conversation, but we're a long ways away from that. Um, we also mentioned Christmas Day. 
Christmas Day is highlighted with some great games. It kicks off with my Knicks against the Hawks. That looks like that's turning into a little bit of a rivalry of young up and coming teams as well. I'm interested to see. I'm I'm interested to see my Knicks in general because Kemba looks happy to be home. Evan Fournier, we we've upgraded the talent, but Trey Young is no joke, man. We we know that. We saw that last year in the playoffs. Um, Boston, think, Milwaukee. I think uh, I'm sorry, I didn't cut you up, but I think the Knicks win this game on Christmas because uh, you know Kemba wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. Kemba's Kimba, gonna be a difference because if you think about it, right? You know, in the playoffs. You know, it was kind of like it turned into Randall was their guy. And then when he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do, you know what I'm saying? You had Derrick Rose who was putting in a little bit of effort, but it just wasn't enough. But when you bring Kimba into that situation, that changes things a lot because you have to guard Kimba. Like, you, you just, there's no way around it. You have to guard him. I think the Knicks got so much better. Um, I still think they'll finish fourth just because – you know, I just don't think they'll they'll they're gonna they pass the, the the Sixers, the the Bucks, or or the, the Nets with with these moves. But I love all of the moves. I think honestly, I think the Knicks win. I was actually excited. I I text the the the, the screenshot of the the schedule on Christmas to my dad. I was like, yo, they got your guys playing back on Christmas again. So I, I love it, man. I want to see it. Yeah, I, I want to see it too, man. Like I said, I know as we get closer, we'll give more in depth predictions. But I do agree. I mean. Uh, as much as I love what Reggie Bullock brought for the team last year, Evan Fournier and Kemba are upgrades over Reggie Bullock and Alfred Payton. Now you got additional guys who can handle the ball and can shoot. And like you said, it's not as easy to double Randall anymore now. Now you can put shooters around him and make that happen. But at, like I said, as we get closer to Christmas Day, I know we're, we're going to break that game down. Um, Boston, Milwaukee should be interesting. Golden State, Phoenix, that'll probably be a high scoring game. Nets, Lakers. I mean, possible finals preview. It's the primetime game. It's the eight o'clock game on Christmas Day. So that gives everyone more than enough time to get your plate, probably get about a little hour and a half trap nap in there, mm-hmm. and then be ready for the game. Yep. And then the nightcap, after after we're exhausted from watching Lakers in Brooklyn, I mean, we get probably the, the youngest star in the game, Luca, going against Donovan Mitchell. And that, that'll probably be a Pretty shootout as well. The game, yeah. That's gonna yeah, be- so the NBA has, has spoiled us again on Christmas Day, man. Shout out to Adam Silver, man. You got the job done. One. I'm gonna fuck us. This is your African King's company, Michael Blackson. You watching real friends, real talk. Get real with it, my son.